Um, hello, so continuing on problems from biweekly contest 123, this week's biweekly. The third problem is maximum good subarray sum. So basically, this problem we have an array and we have a value integer k. And we have this concept of a good subarray, where a uh, subarray is good if the absolute difference between its first and last element is exactly equal to k. So let's say we have a subarray from position i to j. Then the, if the absolute difference between the first value and the last value is equal to k, then this subarray is good. And the goal of this problem is to return the maximum sum of a good subarray um, from all the good subarrays, so the maximum sum. And if we can't find any, we can just return zero. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. Now, um, constraints are pretty big. Uh, 10 to the power of 5, so we need to do uh, an efficient solution here. So how can we tackle this? So um, this is the definition of a good subarray. From i to j, the absolute value needs to be equal to k. So we only have two cases, right? Either, um, either um, ai minus aj is equal to k. So this is if ai is bigger than ha or it's aj is the bigger value so it's actually aj minus ai you could also write it in this format minus ai plus aj okay so depending on which one is bigger we can just convert this absolute value to this is equal to k okay so what we are trying to do basically with this is find ai in terms of write ai in terms of aj because this will basically will allow us to go through the array go through the array let's say we are at position j and we can look to see maybe using a map where we store previous values we can look to see if we had a value ai that matches the these conditions one of these two conditions. So that's what we are trying to do. And so we want to write AI in terms of HA. So let's see how we can do that quickly here. So for the first one, well, we can just say AI is equal. We can just add up AJ for both sides. So equal to K plus AJ. Okay. Um, and then for this specific case, we can first add AI from both sides, right? So that will leave us with aj equal to um, k plus ai. And from this, we can subtract. Um, so from this, we can actually subtract k from both sides. And so that if we do that, then aj minus k is equal to ai. OK? So what does this mean? So these two now become AI is either is either going to be equal to AJ plus K or AI is equal to AJ minus K. Okay, so only in these two conditions, this subarray would be good. Okay, so that's the first thing. And so what we can do, as I said earlier, is we can have a scene map that just keeps track of the AI values we've seen so far. And every time we are looking at position J, we can check if that AI is in our map already or not. So let's say, for example, we go through the array saying for, let's call it J, X. Let's have the value be X. And we enumerate A like this. Okay. Now, in this case, so if we write this in terms of X, this is going to be X plus K or X minus K. And so we are looking for if scene has either x plus k or x minus k. Okay, and of course here, when we finish that processing, we want to say that scene for x is going to be equal to j. So we start the position for later. Um, now... Now, what should we, um, how, well, how do we process it? Um, so here, how do we process it? Well, we also need to, so we can just go through all the possibilities. So X plus K 
and x minus k. So let's call that y. Okay. And we we check if it's in scene. So if it's in scene, then y th in scene, then that means we had a previous position, a i, right? And now we can just get that position previously that we had. And then we can get this. Remember, what we want is the maximum good subarray, right? And so that's what we need uh, to keep track of here. But how do we get the sum? Well, the sum between um, i to j, we can either do a loop for k from i to j, but this is expensive and we are already doing a loop. So if we do that, then we would have O of n squared. And the problem says that we can have the length up to 10 to the power of 5. So that will give us 10 to the power of 10. So it won't pass. So how do we do a sum between two positions uh, efficiently? Well, that's exactly what prefix sum is for. So assume we uh, pre-calculate prefix sum, we'll do that in the implementation. But once we do that, how do we get this prefix sum value? Let's assume my prefix sum will start numbering actually from 1 to n for the values of the array. Then it's going to be p, p of g plus 1 minus p of i. This is going to be the sum for this range. So we can actually use this to check if this is the max so far and compare it with the best and get the max. So that's what we can use here. Now one problem that we need to tackle is is how do we handle duplicates, right? So well, let's say for example we have 2, 3, 3, 3, 4. Um, the array is not really sorted but uh, 6 maybe 5. 9, uh, 8, something like this, okay? And let's say maybe k is equal to 3. And let's say we are at this, this is our j position. Then this is our x. So 6 minus 3 is equal to 3, and we have three instances. So which one should we take? That's that's the question here. Well, we know that what we are looking for, the, what the problem is asking us to do, is find the maximum subarray sum. Okay, and so which one is better? Which one of these is better? Well, look at what we are trying to do. We are trying to we subtract this prefix sum with the prefix sum at i. So which one is better? Well, since we subtract, we need the smallest p of i. So actually, the best one to take is this one, the first three because it will give us the smallest prefix sum. And so that means here we shouldn't override the position if the prefix sum is bigger, because if it's bigger, then that will give us a smaller prefix sum, so a smaller s sum for the subarray. And so that means here we override only if the value is not in scene, or if this is actually smaller. So if the prefix sum Um, or if the prefix sum for i, so sorry, this position that we are trying to store is j. If the prefix sum for j is actually smaller than what we had before, what did we have before? That's a p of this i, which is seen of y. Okay? So only in this case that we should um, override Okay? Because if it existed before, we should override it only if, it's, if the prefix sum is smaller than this okay that's the idea now in this specific case the values were 333 three, three, but if the values were negative then uh, if the values are positive then it's always better to take the first position but if the values are negative then maybe it's better some values are negative then it could be better that it's better to take um, a closer value to get a smaller prefix sum okay so that's the, the main idea here, and that's pretty much it, right? With this, we should be able to um, just go through the array, find the ones that can form a good subarray, the previous position that can form a good subarray with J, and then check if we have the best subarray sum, and then store the value for later to use for later positions. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this. Um, for the idea, let's implement it and make sure it passes. Um, okay, so now we just need to implement our solution. So first, let's just change this to be A. 
And this is going to be the Arsene array that we talked about. And this is the best sum we can find. We initialize it to the very lowest value possible so that any other value can be bigger than, a, th th than that value. Um, and then now we need, of course, our prefix sum. So let's call it P. Um, and let's just, um, the way I usually do this, we can just use era tools accumulate. You can do a for loop, but it's just easier to use it like this. Now we need to convert it to a list. And since it's just simpler to avoid like for, for P of zero for the prefix sum from, from the first position, um, it's, if we want to do uh, P zero, maybe minus P minus one, then that's not going to work. So just to make that calculation easier for indices, let's just add zero. And now that means if we are trying to find the prefix sum up to J, we have to do a J plus one. Okay. And to get from I to J, we can just subtract uh, P of I because this effectively would mean from position J in the array to position I minus one, subtract the prefix sum for position I minus one. And that will effectively get us the sum from I to J. Okay. So we'll do that approach and now we can just do what we saw in the overview. So um, since we already wrote it, we I will just paste it here. So we go through the elements in the array. If we find that there is a previous position that gave us um, a good subarray, which means basically it's either x minus k or x plus k, then we get that position and we check if it's the, the best sum so far. And this is just getting the sum from i to j. And we override and place this position for later positions only if there is no occurrence of the number, and so we just uh, uh, set it up or if it existed before, so it's a duplicate, but we can either do equal or bigger, it doesn't matter really. Um, or the prefix sum of the previous one is bigger than the current one, then we want to use the current one because the prefix sum is smaller and this, that means the this sum would be the smaller, uh, would be the greater one, would be larger, right? And so we return best at the end, but we wanna check in case that we didn't find any sub, uh, good subarray we want to check if that's the case, then this value will still be this. And so in that case, we want to return zero uh, because that's what we are asked to do here. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. So let's run this. Let's submit. And this passes. Okay. Now in terms of time complexity, if you take a look here, this is just all of one operation because we are doing it only two times. And this is O of N. Um, so overall time complexity is O of N. For space complexity, we are using prefix ar array here, so that's O of n over there, and then the scene array is of scene map is also O of n, so overall O of n time and O of n space. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one. Bye.